Our topic today, ya ikhwani, is something very important and very rare to find in these days. It's called the sadaqa, friendship, brotherhood. It's something now it's very rare to find. A sadaqa, friendship, is a ni'mah. It's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah bless you with a good friend, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue this blessing and hold tight in this relationship. They say that the al-ikhwa, al-ikhwa means say the brotherhood, as two hands. One wash the other. Then if you have a good brother, exactly like you have second hand to wash your first hand. And if you don't have a brother, you cannot wash your hand because one hand by itself cannot clap. And I'm not talking about your brother from your mother and your father. Sometimes you have a relationship and love to a brother who is not your brother from your father and your mother and you never even met him and you never even speak in his language. But it's called Al-Arwah Tata Qabal. Aisha narrated and Abu Huraira narrated Al-Arwah Junudun Mujannada The soul. The soul is a soldier from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? فَمَا تَعَارَفَ مِنْهَا تَلَفْ Who that every soul can figure out her own match of soul. وَمَا اخْتَلَفَ مِنْهَا وَمَا تَنَاكَرَ مِنْهَا اخْتَلَفْ And whoever is different, they don't never get match. You can see couples marriage for 40 years. And after 40 years, they said, you know what? We are not match. The spirit is not, it's like we are not the same. You know, and this is, they didn't recognize that for 40 years. Because their spirit is not even a match. There is a, a story being said a long time ago in the time of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. There was a woman called Mudhika to Mecca. Her job, her title was bring the happiness in the heart of the believers. She was the smile of Mecca. You know, no, no matter where Meglis is, if she's present in this Meglis, everybody's happy, everybody's laughing. And they give her a title, Mudhika. Mudhika means like making people happy and jokes and fun. And then one day she decided to immigrate to Medina to see Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when she moved there, she left the whole Medina and you went in the area far away in the Medina and she knocked a door for a house. And the woman opened the door and she said to her, how can I help you? She said to her, is there is a man in this house? She said, no, my, my husband passed away and I am a widow and I have four daughters. She said, can I live with you? She said, sure. And then she stayed with her for a couple of days and then she said, I'm going to go to Sayyidah, you know, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she went to her and she told her, Aisha, when she met her, she said, oh, you came from Mecca? Where you live now? She said, I moved to Medina, closer to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she said to her, where you live? She said, I choose a house far away in Medina for an old woman with her four kids. And Aisha said to her, is this house, this lady lived there and beside this house? She said, yes. She said to her, Sadaqa Rasulullah. This woman is the one that she make all the Ahl al Medina laugh. And she was also the nicest woman that when she is a present in a place, it's reflect with happiness. Then she said, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't say anything from his own mind but it's a revelation. The soul choose the matching soul. In Surah Maryam, ayah number 96, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلْ لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانَ وِدَّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised in the Quran, in Surah Maryam, ayah number 96, that for the believers who do the good deed, and work on their iman and do the righteous deeds 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rahman, they will, He will give Rahmah and Wit. And Wit mean to put the love in the heart of the believers towards you. And you know that Jibreel alayhi salam teach Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said to him, when Allah loves someone, what he's supposed to do? Rasulullah sallallahu said, is a ahabbak Allah. Ya Allah, is a ahabbak Allah. This is, this is my wish and everybody wish. Is a ahabbak Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Jibreel. Number one, call Jibreel. And he told Jibreel, come here. I love Ashraf, I love Amir, and love him. The order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. This order. Then Jibreel said, Sam'an wa ta'an. Okay, that's done. If you love him, Allah, I love him too. Then Jibreel leave. And then Jibreel is the master of all the angels. He called all the angels in the Sama. And he said, you know what? We get an order today. Allah love Ashraf or Amir and I love him because Allah loved him then all the Malaika said Sam'an wa ta'an we obey we love him too then the master of the angel come to the earth with a message to all mankind love this man because Allah and Jibreel and the angel love him فَيُكْتَبْ لَكَ حُبُّ النَّاسِ then it's written for you in this earth Everybody see you say, oh, I love this guy. Do you know him? No, I never met him. I just love him. You know, every time I see him, he reminds me by Allah. Subhanallah. You know, they say, they say a righteous man when he enter a maglis, and the maglis have 100 people. This 100 people have 99 munafiq, 99 hypocrites. And they have only one, a believer. Then the believer enter and walk around and walk around and then his soul make him choose the only one in this group that matches his soul. Then he land beside the only righteous man in a hundred people. And the opposite true. When the most crooked person the person who's far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he entered the maglis, he look in the group, look all of them. And then you find his feet take him toward the worst person in the group. And he land beside him. They match the essence of their soul, calling each other. SubhanAllah. Parent is so worried about their kids. Oh, don't match with this person. Don't go with this guy. You know, this person is very bad. This person is very bad. It's, it's, that's your job, yes. But if you focus in him from an early age, that he love Allah and he love the Prophet, don't miss prayers. Fast for sake of Allah. Pray for sake of Allah. Love Rasulullah. Love the Sahaba. Love Ali. Love Abu Bakr. Love Umar. Love Uthman. You will not worry about him because you know why? Because his soul will call the similar soul. He will never be a match with a bad person, never. He will not find himself closer to this person. His feet will not take him to this route. Subhanallah. Hadith Abu Hurairah narrated that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us a story about a man, about a man who was traveling from a city to another city. And he was traveling, and mashaqqa, mashaqqa mean hardship for traveling that time. Sun, no uh, access, no air condition, no uh, cold water, and dust, and sand, and wind. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him an angel in the shape of a human being. And he told him, Brother Khalid, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the town, the next town, not the next one, the following one. He said, why? He said, I'm going to meet with Brother Samir. He said, why? What do you have with Brother Samir? Do you have business with him? No. Are you married to his relative or his sister? He said, no. He said, why are you making this whole wrong trip? He said, I love him for sake of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the angel, give him the glad titan. 
Allah loves you as you love this servant of Allah. Subhanallah. Love for sake of Allah. Ali radiallahu an. Karam Allah Ali, when he went to Kufa, he went to Kufa, and when he entered in the Kufa, he said, Ya Ahl al Kufa, oh the people of Kufa, laqad arifna, we know now who is the best of Ahl al Kufa and who is the worst of Ahl al Kufa. Then Ahl al Kufa said, What are you talking about, Ali? How did you know that? He said, We came to this land and he, we have, you know, shurafa, akhila. We, have, we came with people very high standard, standard, you know, salihin, you know, atqiya, sawameen, people very high in ranking with us. And when they came and landed in Kufa, they landed in houses of other people. Then we recognize that this landing, they land on a righteous people. And we had the worst people with us in this trip. They are nasty. They're talking behind the back and they are whispering and they are backbiting. And we know their habits. We, we, are fi we figured them out. And when they came with us, they landed to other people. Then we know where they landed. Then now we know in Ali Kufa, we know who's the best and who's the worst. And Ali, mashallah, he, he teaches that. They say that the sadaqah, they say that friendship, when you have a good brotherhood, when, you, when your brother love you for sake of Allah, he will build a palace for you. In his heart, he will build a palace for you because he wants you to live in this palace. He will talk to you and talk behind your back and you are present and not present, he will protect you and he will talk about you as you're present and he will talk to you in the not your present better than that. And when anybody say, oh, Brother Sharif, oh, Brother Sharif, no, don't, he don't, and just don't talk about Brother Sharif like that. I know him. I live with him. I deal with him. Then he back you up when you're not around. He stand for you. This is the friendship. And your enemy will dig a grave for you. When one person mentions the name of a person, then this person will continue the conversation and dig deeper for you to go deeper in your grave. Now, Omar radiallahu anhi said something so beautiful about friendship. Very important, remember that. He said, مَا أَعْطَ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ الْإِسْلَامِ خَيْرًا إِلَّا صَدِيقٌ صَالِحٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Omar said, Allah didn't give us better than Islam. Islam was the toughest thing that Allah gave us in our life. But the second thing is a righteous friend, a righteous brother. If you get him, keep him beside you. Don't lose him. Now, Hassan al-Basri says something more wonderful than Umar. Umar said, after Islam comes immediately in the second ranking, friendship. If he's righteous. Al-Hasan al-Basri say something more beautiful. He said, your best friend, the righteous best friend, is better for you than your kids and your family. Then they said to him, Al-Hasan, how can you say that? I have a brother tell me, listen, I don't have any time for anything. I have my kids and my wife and I have nothing to, this is, I have to work for them. I have to raise them well, work very hard. We're living in fitna right now. But Hassan al-Basri says something else. Hassan al-Basri say, a righteous friend is better than your family and your kids. Why, Hassan? He said, because my family remind me by dunya. My family remind me by duty that I have to work to pay the bills and to give them luxury life and to give them qualification and make them sure that they're going to go to the best college and have a better house. That they always remind me by dunya. But a righteous friend, he will always remind me, he said, you know, you know what, it's a journey. We're going to die soon. You know, they call them in Arabic, as-sahib, sahib. As-sahib, the friend, 
he'll pull you with him. Then if you, my friends, where do you, where you think I'm going to pull you? In a hookah place or a masjid to have a lecture? Then who is around you? People get upset. Oh, he never called me for two weeks. Oh, he never, he never answered my phone. Uh, don't be worried about a person absent in your life and don't worry about why he left you. You need to ask yourself, who's surrounding you? If the people surrounding you righteous, they tell you that your soul is matched. But if the righteous people left you, then you recognize that your iman went down and you are not in the level of the righteousness and you cannot match with them, then they're so distant from you. And now you are surrounding with the soul that match your way. A gambler, drug addict, a person who doesn't pray. Then either you fix yourself and rise up to get back to the righteous. We, when we're young and we, want, we find our sheikh coming, we all of us watch who the sheikh will talk to. You know, you know, all the shoots are sometimes people run to them, but you know, when the sheikh comes and run to someone, <laughs> something going on. Then we always see where the sheikh will sit down, where the sheikh will talk to. You know why? Because he doesn't land without his soul. Subhanallah. Now, the final thing is, I want to remind everyone that Al Qurb al Sahib, your friend is the one who will back you up when your Iman goes down. Then you have to remember, who will rise you up when your Iman goes down? If you have this person in your life, just hold tight to him. You know, you say, the minute I, I see him, I remember Allah. Uh, you know, every time I meet him, he want to grab me to a halaqa or he want to grab me to zikr or he remind me that well, let's do something for sake of Allah. And if the other person tell you, hey, let's go to the mall, let's hang uh, around this person, let's do this, let's uh, scam this person, then you have to understand that your soul is not high enough, that you are not qualified to go with the righteous.